despite the scarce resources and maybe limited uh, the force we have, uh, we are sure that the right is on our way, mm -hmm. on our side. We know that the Armenian people have suffered many genocides, Sungait uh, and of course Baku uh, are just another, unfortunately, in a long, in a long succession. And the only, my only point is that we must make sure that it never happens again. Those who say that, you know, somehow by, uh, by, by uh, not talking about the genocide, that's you know, somehow a good thing, uh, because it's in the past, need to be reminded that it's not in the past. It's not in the past for Armenians, and it's not in the past for a lot of people who, uh, who uh, become the victims of genocide. In the 90s, when I went to the Karabakh and uh, Armenia for the first time, that we would meet a lot of the refugees from, from Baku uh, who were in very bad uh, situations at the time because they basically uh, you know, were, were forced out of, their, out of Azerbaijan and had to find either Armenia or Karabakh had to find places for them to live, you know, ways for them to survive. Um, and, um, and they were taken in, obviously, by, uh, by uh, Armenians in uh, both the court of Karabakh and Armenia itself. I think that it is important uh, always to remember. Uh, uh, I remember my mother, God rest her soul, always saying to me, uh, the one prayer that I have is that I, is that I never lose my mind. And I used to tease her and say, Mom, nothing happened in your 50s, nothing happened in your 60s, nothing happened in your 70s, nothing happened in your 80s, now you're in your early 90s, I think that you're safe. <laughs> she said, that, uh, that memories are the most important things that we have in life. And so the commemoration of what happened um, is uh, not only instructive uh, to us and those that were so savagely uh, uh, beaten and tortured and uh, not only uh, in what we just saw, but the, uh, uh, the genocide pogroms, as uh, Congressman Bullock said, uh, we have our work cut out for us here in Congress, and that work is uh, to ensure that Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh maintain our full and robust support. Uh, that is something that is not a given. We have to fight for that. We have to earn that support. We have a lot of new members of Congress now, and they need to be educated as well. And that means keeping pressure on Azerbaijan through the uh, Freedom Support Act, even as two presidents continue <coughs> to waive that. So um, I am one with you in this effort. I serve on the Foreign Affairs Committee. I serve on the Europe and Eurasia Subcommittee. So the jurisdiction of uh, all the difficulties is right in the subcommittee on, in which I serve. Whether, whether it's massacres at Zungai or Baku or any place else, or whether it's the Armenian genocide carried on by the Ottoman Empire, it's something that we need to always remember and always recall and never forget and teach it to our children and teach it to our children's children so that things like this will not happen again and people will know, tyrants will know, that we're not going to sweep uh, things under the rug. Uh, you should know when we have the vote, we voted three times now on the Armenian Genocide and the Foreign Affairs Committee. It's never really, unfortunately, gotten on the, on the House floor. But one of those times, I had a phone call uh, late at night from Anna Eshin, who was telling me, uh, please don't forget us, uh, vote correctly, do the right thing. And of course, we took the vote, I did do the right thing, and we won by one vote. That's right. So I took credit for it. <laughs> but, uh, you should also know that uh, when we had a, a visitation by the uh, Turkish uh, foreign minister, uh, a few months ago, maybe two or three months ago, um, one of the things I raised at the meeting was the Armenian genocide and the fact that, uh, that Turkey uh, has not apologized for it and that we're not going to uh, stop uh, until they do. Dear friends, when the Armenians of Nagorno Karabakh, suppressed by the Soviet Azeri rule for 70 years, deprived of elementary rights to life and development, stood for their freedom and independence, the subsequent Azeri authorities made no distinction in means and methods to silence them, including orchestrated mass pogroms and killings against peaceful Armenians living in Sungai, Baku, and elsewhere in Azerbaijan. Without exaggeration, those were the first mass killings 
and ethnic cleansings in the post cold War era in Europe. However, today, the Azerbaijani propaganda machinery spares no effort to present the chronology of events upside down, to reverse those facts, to revise the history. They have gone so far as to present the fact of the intervention of Soviet troops in January 1990 in Baku to stop the mass killings of Armenians as an episode of a very fight for national liberation. And the irony is that many who are not well informed of those events fall into the Azerbaijan. For example, as recently as a month ago, the newly elected mayor of Washington DC made a favorable for Azeri statement on those events. Both last year and this year, a couple of members of the US Congress, persuaded by Azeris, made a like statements on Hojal events, inspired by oil revenues, exploiting our constructiveness, our focus on negotiations. The Azeris have unleashed an entire propaganda trying to buy international loyalty, to revise the history, and create a favorable atmosphere for themselves. In these circumstances, naturally we couldn't afford ourselves to stay away. Dear friends, it is important to control, to counterweight the zero events. It is important to remember and remind others the truth about those events and those days. We have been fighting Turkish denial all these years, and we will be fighting Azeri revisionism as well. We will demand condemnation and punishment of perpetrators of massacres of Sungai, Shaumian, Kirovaba, Baku, Marava, and other places. I have said on other occasions, I want to repeat here again, no statute of limitations on genocidal acts against humanity. We will remember and remind the truth not only because it's our moral obligation, but also because it is an important political and security issue and has the most direct implication for the resolution of Nagorno Karabakh. We understand it requires further time, further time and resource when we already have pretty busy schedules and agendas. However, it's important. the importance of it cannot be overestimated. I am proud that both our friends in the United States Congress, Armenia and Karabakh, as well as the Armenian American organizations, the Armenian Assembly, the Armenian National Committee, are unanimous and united in this. I want to thank all of you for that. I want to thank each and every one of you for attending tonight's event this time of pleasant day. Thank you once again. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of Holy Spirit be with us all and the Amen. Goodbye, Alicia.